So moving on to dynamic analysis, um, one of the first things you need to think about when you're running uh, your malware is that you're doing it in a safe environment because if you are just using your home PC and you start running some malware, the, it's very easy to end up um, you know, infecting your own host machine, um, which can invalidate your findings because um, you know, they can um, make it difficult for you to actually um, analyze the code, but also you can end up spreading the malware in your own network. So what you probably want to do is have isolated machines or virtual machines, or containers, or sandboxes. So there's lots of different ways you can kind of try and isolate the program that you're running, um, but you just need to be careful because if you're not careful enough, um, you know the malware might be doing what it can to try and escape from the isolation that you're providing. So, you know, a VM might not provide enough protection, especially if you connect it to the network. Um, so you need to decide whether or not you are going to connect your syst your analysis system to the network. Um, so the, the the lot of malware does kind of phone home um, to the to the attacker to tell you about to tell the attacker about the fact that your system's been compromised. Um, so if you isolate your system, uh, it can kind of prevent all of the normal behavior from happening. Um, but it can also help because it stops the attacker from learning your IP address. Um, and, you know, depending on whether your IP address gives away your own identity, uh, you know, you might end up with an issue of retaliation um, and, and the rest of it. So, the, if, so limiting the network is usually quite a good idea, but just be aware that it means that not all the original behavior you're going to see. Um, and some some malware will change its behavior based on the environment it finds itself in. So if it finds it can't do network communication and it looks like it's running in a VM, it might just not run at all uh, or just not do the interesting things. So then static analysis would be the way to go or trying to safely produce an environment where you can do the dynamic analysis. You can look at live, live uh, memory analysis, which is where you look at the actual running processes on a system and look at what it has in memory. Um, and you can do things like take core dumps uh, of the memory. Um, and you can do that if you're a super user without disturbing the behavior of the program. Often you can just grab um, what's in memory. So that can be like a um, kind of an easier way of like looking at what a program is doing without giving away to the malware straight away that you are doing something. You could do things like um, attach to a running process with a debugger or, or some kind of monitoring tool, um, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but that, but programs can tell that you're doing that, uh, and they often will basically just change their behavior entirely if when they see that you're doing that. Um, so it might just stop doing the malicious thing, for example, which would make it difficult to analyze. Um, so you could do it on a compromised system. So for example, if you're in an organization and you find yourself that you've got some malware, you could do your analysis on that system. Um, or you could copy the malware to your safe environment to do the analysis um, on in a, in a VM or a separate computer. So one way that you can look at the behavior of a program is to look at the system calls that they make. So the system calls are the interface between the user level process or program that you're running and the kernel that is, um, you know, looking after the actual hardware and doing all the, um, uh, you know, complicated stuff. So um, if that interface between the kernel and the, um, the program, that's the system, um, system call interface. And so you could look at all of the system calls that are being sent by the program to the kernel. And that will include things like open this file or uh, I want to start talking to the network, uh, you know, open a port to this remote computer. So a lot of like the high level interesting stuff is at the system call level, but not everything happens at system call level. So once that file is open and the program is like uh, doing some computations or whatever based on that, that's not happening at the kernel level, that's at the user level. So there's, there's no system calls happening there. So system calls can be a nice 
sort of high level view, but system calls are also really complicated because they were never really designed as a security um, or behavior analysis kind of layer. So for example, opening a connection to a remote system involves like quite a lot of system calls to set up all of the you know connection details and make the connection, establish a connection and everything else. Whereas if you just fired up Wireshark, you would just see, well, that's what happened on the network connected to that port. So system calls uh, can be helpful, but they're kind of like not not ideal in some ways as well. Um, so if you do want to do system call monitoring, you can use strace on a Linux system. So you can basically say strace and then run the name of the program, and it will output all of the details of all system calls. And you'll see that there's a lot. Even a simple program will make a lot of system calls. Um, and you can actually also attach to a running process. Um, and you can use different options um, for S-Trace to filter out what it shows you, because it will show you a lot, because you know there's a lot of system calls in a normal program's behavior. And um, so it would also be appropriate to listen to the network traffic um, and try and find out information on the internet. Um, try interacting with the program that you're monitoring to send it commands if you can figure out how, um, to, you know, figure out how that program's working uh, and you might be able to send the malware some instructions. For example, if it was a, um, a uh, botnet, for example, and you've got a uh, um, zombie, so you've actually got the um, process that runs on your, on a client computer within the botnet, you could set, try sending out commands and see what happens. And then look at what uh, that actually does. So look at the pro, the files that it opens and writes to and creates. Library call monitoring is similar, um, except that it reports each time a dynamic library function is called. Um, so, you know, programs link to the libraries um, and that contains the code written by other developers. So for example, the standard C library um, has a whole bunch of functions that a lot of people use because you know why would you rewrite those things from scratch? Um, and so on Linux, they're shared objects.so. Um, but you can expose more behavior as kind of easier to make sense of, to be honest, than a system call monitoring because you'll look at it, do things like trying to compare strings to each other because they'll use a string compare function um, within a library so for example, you might have the system call would be, we'll open this file. A library call would be, we'll compare these two strings to each other. So often it's just a little bit closer to the behavior of the program than the system call. Um, there's process monitor on Windows you can use to look at the file and registry access. Uh, and there's LSOV, which is a similar thing in Linux. Um, and you can kind of filter it to you know, look at the details that you're interested in. Uh, and you can use network monitoring, like using sniffers like Wireshark, uh, TCP dump, and you can com combine that with something like um, Procmon to actually you know, get a good view of what the program's doing. You can take that one step further and do debugging, which is where you can basically step through each machine instruction um, that the process is doing and you can step through every little bit of behavior um, to understand exactly what that program is doing at the lowest level. Um, and then you can also pull stuff out of memory and things using that technique. Um, and if, if you do have the source code, for example, either C codes compiled into the program, you can actually see everything that's happening. Um, but otherwise, you can still step through all the assembly, like the actual machine instructions. So you, there are also things that you can do to do a automated dynamic analysis. So you can run uh, malware in an isolated environment um, and automatically save the changes made to the system or record all the file network activity. So there's things like um, Cuckoo Sandbox, uh, Zero Wine, Coffee and Write Sandboxes and things like that where you can basically run a program in an environment where it will automatically give you a report at the end of all the stuff that happened when that program is running. So you can see all the, prog all the files that the program changed, for example. And they can be 
kind of like an easier way to do dynamic analysis. It's a very high level view. You just run the program and at the end you look at it and it will give you a report. So in conclusion, we've kind of just sped through a very high level overview of the kinds of analysis you can do when doing malware analysis and reverse engineering. And, you know, when we do malware analysis, it can tell us a lot about some malware, about exactly how, how what it's doing in terms of the high level behavior of it. And you can really dig into that using static analysis to try and make sense of exactly what that process does um, and looking at the code within it of what it's doing, like the machine code. Um, and so that's from static analysis, where we look at the program without running it, and dynamic analysis, which is where we run the program. So there's a, a um, very fast overview of a huge field of study, um, and we're going to go into those um, each of those things as individual topics um, you know, going forward. So I hope you found that interesting. I hope that that helps you to understand malware uh, and reverse engineering um, better than you did to start with. So thanks a lot.